Welcome to Fresh Bread. Well, here it is, another time together and um, share the things of the Lord and what God's saying to me and what I feel like He may be uh, confirming to you as I share with you the message today. I know that right now there's a great outpouring of God's Spirit. I believe that He's speaking to many of us through dreams and visions and clarity of words and scriptures and all kinds of way. And I rejoice in that and I'm excited. Uh, recently, the Lord's been dealing with me about the reality of how He wants to speak and that I'm not to limit Him. And so um, one of the things that's been going on is that I've been dreaming a lot, some really amazing dreams. Like last week I had a dream that um, I was going in my dream, I was going up to the church to tell my pastor I was gonna be leaving, but I didn't wanna just leave and not tell him why. So anyway, when I got there, um, he was in his office and there was all kinds of noise going on and he was in his chair kind of rolling around as as this one came in and had a situation or this one was you know pulling on him or it was just very 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 distracting and very chaotic for him and so he would handle a situation roll back to his desk and then he'd handle another situation and roll back to his desk so that he could study and be in the word and in prayer but he was constantly being pulled away from the presence of the lord but he it, it, he kept going, so it wasn't like they stopped him from going, but it was just a real hindrance and a real interruption of his time. And so I remember standing there and finally getting his attention, and I thought, well, he can't get up. He's, he's sitting in his chair, and he can't get up. And I was just very aware of that, like he was like tied to his chair and was rolling around. And so anyway, I said, Pastor, you know, I explained to him why I was there, and I told him I was going to be uh, leaving the church and, and then I was going to be moving and I was going to be moving too. And when I got to the two, I woke up from my dream and I went, oh no, Lord, where was I moving? What was that all about? And so I kind of, you know, got a little uh, frustrated about that because I thought, where? I almost knew, you know, just the excitement of your right there on the edge and then it's like, oh, I don't know what it was. But anyway, so I got up and I began to pray and I thought, okay, Lord, you'll show me what that means about my moving or whatever. I said, but Lord, I, I'm really concerned about my pastor. And so I was praying about him and, the, and you know, the whole thing about what I was feeling like was going on at that in that dream. And so I um, went ahead and finished my devotion and my time with prayer and then got ready for my client. So I had my first client that morning. And, and when she came, we began to talk about things uh, uh, of the Lord because she's a believer. And, and so we were talking about uh, dreams. And she said, do you really think dreams are real? and can really come from the Lord? And I said, absolutely. So I shared with her what I had dreamt the night before about my pastor. And uh, while I was telling her about that, I had just finished up kind of what I thought was going on, my cell phone rings. And it was a guy that does a Tuesday night Bible study that uh, my pastor and I and some other ministers go to uh, and other people. Uh, so he was saying, Jan, are you coming tonight to, to Bible study? I said, yeah, I've already told my family I'm not going to the baseball game because I felt like and believed I was being led to go to that study that night. And I said, so I'll be there. He said, well, Pastor Eric has got three slip discs and some things going on in his back. And he said, so we're going to be praying for him. And I went, oh, okay, Pastor Eric. And he said, yes. So I said, okay, I'll be there. And so I hung up and so my client was going, oh, wow that was quick and so it really confirmed to her that dreams were from the lord and so uh, anyway so we figured out the reason he couldn't get up out of the chair was not only is his back hurt but there's some things going on spiritually but that's all for an another time so anyway i just wanted to share with you that god is speaking in dreams and he'll speak through other people and he'll speak to you through the word and there's a great moving of his spirit because we know things are so chaotic and then we have to know that we're hearing from the god uh, that created heaven and earth and you and me so that when we're in situations and needing to make decisions or needing to uh, know what to do god's spirit is always guiding us into truth so i got to thinking about you know lord dreams and visions aren't the only way you speak to us and so he, he brought me to the book of acts chapter two and uh, that's where i want to read and kind of pick up right now for our uh, uh, scriptures today is in acts 2 verse 14 and let's start reading and it says in 14 
But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my word, for these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And it goes on in verse 17, he says, And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my men servants and on my female servants in those days. I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor and smoke, and the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. There's coming a day, y'all, that Jesus is coming again. Coming again, there's going to be a magnificent day. But before those days, he said, I'm pouring out my spirit. And I believe even more so in a greater uh, anointing, a greater infilling of the Holy Ghost in these days, um, more insight, more revelation, more opportunity to hear, more clarity. You know, we all have gone through dark, dry periods of our life where we're just not sure what the Lord is saying. And, and it feels like it's 400 years before we hear uh, anything from Him. But now, but now, I believe we're in a time that God's saying, let me give you dreams. Let me give you visions. Let me give you words to prophesy. Let me fill you with the power of my Holy Spirit. And, you know, don't be afraid of what that might look like or how that might turn out or what people might think. Just be in fellowship with the Lord and His Spirit so that you can be filled to overflowing because we need that in these days. I believe that God is speaking, you know, through scriptures in ways that we've never heard. And there's a real line being drawn in the sand. And we've talked about this before. But I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that that, um, that the church has been uh, shaken. I believe the church has been put in a, a place where God's looking at it through the eye of of his prophetic word seeing where we measure up i was in a worship service last night uh where we were just really having a, a time before the lord to hear from him and to worship him and one of the things that the lord showed me many things but one of the things that he was showing me in the spirit realm was that he was coming to the churches and he's already begun this i understand that but i'm just telling you not like what he's doing now not like and not appearing like he has in days before to the magnitude of what he's about to. Anyway, he was showing me in the spirit that he was coming to churches, small, big, medium-sized churches, every denomination, everything, everyone that claimed to even be related um, as a church, um, Jesus was showing up. And I was seeing him as an electrician, like he was coming to do a, a light check like he was checking the lighting of the church. And so I, w I watched him as he walked into this church. He went up the stairs and he opened the door and he looked in and he looked to see if the light was shining. If the light was shining, he shut the door and he backed out and he went on down to the next church. Same thing, he'd open the door, look in, and if the light was shining, he closed the door and then he went to the next church because he was checking the lights. And so anyway, when he got to the uh, next church, he opened the door and there was no light. And he walked down the aisle of the church and took the candlestick from the church, left with it, and nobody even noticed he was there. Nobody noticed that he went up and took the candlestick. Nobody noticed that the candlestick was gone. They were clueless and blind to what Jesus was doing. I believe that's what's happening. You know, we know the scripture says that everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. I believe that's happening as well. But I believe the Lord is doing um, an inspection of the body of Christ. He's looking for where heresies coming forth, where doctrines are wrong and, and misguidance of the people and, and a misrepresentation of his word and what he means. Um, I believe he's doing a light check right now. Does that sound negative? I don't believe so. I believe he has every right to know the condition of every church that claims to be a Christian church. And I believe that if anybody can do an inspection, it can be Jesus. So I just want to encourage you that, that um, 
if you're not in a church that's preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified and Him being the Son of God and no other way but to the Father is through Jesus and, you know, that whole thing. If you're not there and you are praying that God will change your church, well, <laughs> if they're not willing to, to be on sound doctrine and if they're not willing to believe that Jesus Christ is who He is and says He is, um, get out. If heresy is coming forth, if wrong doctrine is coming forth, if any other Jesus is being preached then Jesus Christ, get out. But if you're in a church where Jesus is, is magnified and lifted up and, and everyone's expecting uh, the Holy Spirit to draw men unto Jesus to be saved for salvation, hallelujah, stay there. Be one that's in the church edifying, you know, being an encouragement to your pastor. Get in there and be a harvester. Be one that wants to go out and harvest the field and, and participate in this end time ministry that needs to take place and is taking place, hallelujah. And so going back to um, the dreams and vision, one of the other things the Lord has shown me recently was that I could see um, clouds that were just, it was like a bad, bad storm, like a, like a hurricane or, or more like a, a tornado F5 or something. I mean, it was just horrific. And so it was coming towards, um, you know, cities and people to, to destroy it. And then while it was brewing and swirling and getting ready and, you know, working up its thunder and its destruction, right above it began to, to rise a brilliant light just a brilliant light and what I could see was that Jesus was coming on the scene and that he was dispelling all of the destruction and all of the despair and all of the scariness of these dark clouds and the Lord spoke to me then and said a new day is dawning and I believe that new day is now there's a new day in the Lord um, a new day to walk in the power of his spirit there's a new day to get into his word and understand what he's saying to you and to me and to the nations um, I, I'm excited about that I mean I at first I was going oh no the clouds are horrible they're they're so huge and oh it's gonna be terrible but then when I started seeing that light Man, when Jesus comes on the scene, everything changes. The atmosphere changes. Our DNA will change. Our, our, our surroundings will change. And what the enemy meant for harm, the devil has to flee because God's saying, Come unto me, draw unto me, because I am doing, I am doing wondrous, miracle things right here in the midst of you and i know that there's so much going on uh you know you'd have to be just ignorant to not realize that you, our southern borders have been taken away our nation's being changed the world is being changed and i i just want to exhort you right now to get out of that american mentality yes we need a great revival a move of god in our nation we need to be humbled before our god almighty and serving him and rejoicing in our salvation and um and i i know great is the sin and great is the gross darkness but i'm telling you it's not just about america folks it's not just about our christianity and our walk with the lord this is a bigger picture it's about the world jesus said go into the world and preach the gospel the whole world and so when we get kind of oh america needs a revival how selfish is that the world is in horrible shape. The world needs the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. The world needs to hear the message. And that's why we need to be sensitive to the spirit of the, of the living God, that if he wants to give us dreams, that we're open to dreams. If he wants to give us prophetic words that will not fear man or our denomination or the people around us or, or be fearful of what we're going to say, he said, give no thought of what you're gonna say. The Holy Spirit will speak through you. Isn't that comforting? Because then you're not responsible for the outcome. You know, we've heard people say, don't shoot the messenger. Really, don't shoot the messenger. You just share what Jesus Christ is saying through his spirit, and you let everything else be taken care of by his power and by his might. You don't have to make anything happen. You don't have to justify anything. You don't have to, um, you don't have to justify yourself. You don't have to even um, be worried about people thinking, uh, them saying it just like they did to Joseph, oh, that dreamer, oh my gosh, him and that, those dreams. I could care less what people are thinking about whether I dream or not and my dreams are from the Lord. I don't care. I'm only concerned about serving my master and my savior. The word says you can't serve two masters. 
And that is so true. You can't, and there's only one worthy, and we know that that, that person is Jesus. Anyway, so as I, you know, finish up here, I know it wasn't very long, but I just wanted to share this with you, that expect that the Holy Spirit's going to be um, talking to you, speaking to you, showing you things. I, I, I tell you, I cannot emphasize or even put into, articulate into words what I believe the Holy Spirit's doing now, the change, the magnificent um, communication that our Lord is wanting to have with the body of Christ in these last days. It's great days in Jesus Christ. It's a great day to be in the body of Christ. It's a wonderful times to be a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's awesome to be hearing things and understanding scriptures and sharing it with people. It may be the saving of someone's soul. It may be the life-changing event in your life that leads you to the next place of service to Him. I've been asking the Lord, Lord, I know when you come, you said, would you find faith on the earth? And I mean, that burns in my heart. I want to be the one that when he comes, he finds faith on the earth in me. I want to be the one that would be willing to give my life for the sake of the kingdom and the preaching of the kingdom for people to be brought in. Maybe some by the hair of their chinny chin chins, as we know that some are going to be saved by fire. That's amazing to me. The extended grace, the constant, unending, unlimited, bottomless grace that our God has for His creation is just amazing. And, and speaking of creation, one of the other things the Lord has spoken to me and shown me recently is um, I could see myself as a garment and I was saying to the Lord, Lord, it's like I, I was seeing myself like I was a garment that was turned inside outward, you know, um, and I could see the tag that was on the inside and, and, you know, it was like a new garment, but it just, it wasn't right. And so what I could see was the Lord was putting his hand, you know how when we fold clothes and we put our hands into the sleeves of the shirt and flip it so that we can fold it right? Anyway, I could see the Lord putting his hand through me like I was the garment. And when he did the folding outward to make it right, what came out was him. It wasn't even the garment that I was seeing myself as. I became a reflection and became the very image of Christ Jesus himself. And I thought, wow. Wow. And so he, he just let me see that I'm caught up in what I'm seeing on the outside of imperfections and, and areas in my life that, that I need to mature in and, and, and things about the Lord that I don't understand. And, you know, we kind of get kind of caught up in self-analysis and everything. And the Lord said, stop it. I see you from the inside out. And the outside is what I want people to see, which is Jesus coming out of you and a true, pure, beautiful reflection of who I am is what the Lord said. And I thought, wow, Lord, that's awesome. And so I began to ask the Lord, not only do I want you to find faith in me if I'm here when he returns, or I want him to find faith in me until the day I go into the grave, my body goes into the grave and I'm lifted up to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't want to be found faithless, faithless, I don't want to be found faithless. I want to be so full of faith, preaching and teaching and sharing the gospel, walking by faith every day, hearing the word of God through the spoken word, the written word, through dreams, through visions, through whatever way he wants to speak. I will not limit him in Jesus' name. And I ask that that begin to burn in you, the passion, the passion of Christ burn in you to want to be a servant, and to want to obey. That's what I ask. So as we finish here, I just hope that you're encouraged. I pray that the Lord will speak through you through dreams, visions, spoken word, every way, and that you have ears to hear, and that you will trust Him, that He will do what He said He will do, because He is who He is.